You're watching Fugitive Red Eye, and welcome to another episode of Nostalgic Gaming Stories. Now, it's been a little bit since I've done an episode of Nostalgic Gaming Stories, but hey, it's about time I do another one, I think. Now, Jet Set Radio Future is both kind of a sequel and a remake to Jet Set or Jet Grind Radio. Radio. I played a lot of Jet Set Radio Future as a kid. It was actually one of the first games I had with an Xbox, because, as many of you probably know, Jet Set Radio Future was one of the games that was bundled with the original Xbox. The game itself had a ton of selectable characters, many of which were secret unlockable characters as well. And at the time, and at the time it was really big, a lot of people didn't use the internet anywhere near as much. So, suffice to say, internet hoaxes were something that people like myself were much more susceptible to back then than now. Every game had their share of internet hoax, fake cheat codes, fake unlockables, all sorts of bullshit like that. For instance, Super Smash Bros. Melee used to have all sorts of stuff that supposedly you could unlock Conker or Banjo or all sorts of other shit. Well, Jet Set was no exception to that. For Jet Set, there were several made-up characters to unlock. For instance, there was supposedly a character named Suga. She was probably the most infamous. Now, Suga was ironically the name that the character Boogie had in the previous game, Jet Set or Jet Grind Radio. I think it might have been different in Jet Set. And in Jet Grind, it was Sugar. I don't know. The first game itself had all sorts of localization differences, whereas this one had a lot of differences even from that. But suffice to say, in Jet Set Radio Future, there is no character called Sugar. But supposedly, there was all this intricate shit you'd have to do to unlock her. And so, of course, I myself tried this many times. Other characters you could supposedly unlock that did actually exist, but were not playable, was DJ Professor K. Supposedly there was a way to unlock him. Obviously there wasn't. Another character you could supposedly unlock was Hayashi. Again, no such way to do it. I can't remember how you were supposed to unlock these characters, but they were ridiculously hard to do, but I still tried it anyway. And believe it or not, another interesting one was a skateboarding hobo. Again, I didn't unlock that, because again, that's not a thing. Nowadays, with the day of the internet, this sort of thing doesn't really go as- doesn't really happen as often, because nobody's gonna fall for this when they can just look it up. But back in the early to mid-2000s, nobody used the internet as much, and it wasn't as big as it is now. I had dial-up at the time, so when I wanted cheat codes, I'd print out a list of them from the internet. But Jet Set's a great game. It actually is one of the few games that I actually have 100% as a kid. Granted, I didn't do that completely on my own. Snowman actually helped immensely with that. I did a lot of the harder characters to unlock, but he unlocked what is arguably the hardest character, Zero Beat. He unlocked him, and I was fucking... Like, I couldn't. It was a hard character. I mean, I know it's getting off topic here, but... Zero Beat is a hard motherfucker to unlock, okay? And I'm glad that I have that save game still, because goddamn was that difficult to do. But yeah, Jet Set Radio is a great game. Uh, I never really played the original Jet Set. I know Snowman has, and I, I think I've seen him play it, but I've never actually played the original Dreamcast version. But Jet Set Radio Future is a great game, and if you haven't played it, I definitely recommend checking it out. Some of these myths and stuff like that were kind of fun at the time, and in a way, I kind of miss those kind of things. Having all this knowledge right from the start, makes things a little bit less fun. There's less mystery out there. Anyway, um, this has been Fugitive Red Eye, and you have a great rest of the day. Subscribe to Fugitive Red Eye.